in a world and time when so much is changing, there is still so much of our culture that has to be documented and kept alive. Who are the bearers of these precious living cultures? How do they pass on a knowledge transmitted through the ages? What they represent has survived colonization, conflict, marginalization, and yet they persist. Sila ang sisidlan, the living vessels that store dayaw, our knowledge, our pride. Our series on the culture bearers, our Gawad Malilika ng Bayan Awardees or Gamaba, continues. This time, we look at those masters who are still with us, whose continuing work we must acknowledge, learn more about, and preserve. Northern Luzon is a home of three Gamaba winners we feature in this episode. The first is a Kalinga teacher. The second is a maker of hats from Abra. The third, a weaver from Ilocos Norte. What can we learn from them as we begin to admire the complexity and the richness of their work? from Pinili Ilocos Norte and perhaps the oldest of the Gamaba winners at the time when she was honored, Magdalena Gamayo's frail frame and quiet demeanor belies the strength of her weaves and the impact of her work on her community. Magdalena Gamayo, well, when she was given the award in 2012, she was already 88 years old. But I think as early as 16, uh, when she already learned uh, the art of weaving, um, the abel, the Ilocano abel. Abel is a uh, kind of term for hobby, no? And um, she has a very, very vast repertoire of abel weaving, especially the binacle pattern. She knows many, many other patterns. Some of them are very difficult to make. Magdalena Gamayo, in spite of her age, can continue uh, doing all those important, very important designs. Camayo specializes in the weaving of the hardy cotton fabric called Abel by the Ilocano. The Binacol pattern, a complex abstraction said to represent the whirlwind, is one of her specialties. Many variations of the Binacol exist, and she still retains the complex mathematics of its construction in her mind and in her heart. But for a skill to survive, there is a need for base raw material of her choice, kapas or locally grown cotton. Isa na di kay mama, dunga kulay, dunga kulay na panait, di ka bangga sa pagdatangan mo. Gamayo's wish is for more young Ilocanos to learn from her and to inherit and carry on the knowledge which she is only a vessel of. Tatindya kang mumanta 
baka ta mato na yan de mamo no ababati diag kon no na manayam pa no madanong ko te sanga gasuta tawon ano saan may miso nga ikarkararag ko ko na po Diyos, no? Manayo na ko kayo lang ang siya. Kaya po, mapayag pa. Anong dahil tirikat ko nga sa tikinabakot. Magdalena is a master of a wide range of repertoire. She can do many designs, techniques, uh, color combinations that a single weaver will not be able to do. So she's really very unusual. That was what made her uh, stand out from all the others. Also the refinement of her technique. So again, quiet person, huh? But beautiful textile. Solidarity is, is really a very strong sense of community. They really are able to build strong um, sense of solidarity among themselves. That's why when you look at Ilocano structures, they're quite simple. Even the churches show these structures. There, there are very few ornaments. What you see is the solidity of structure, simple and compact. Anything compact is more durable. So this is what I can say about Magdalena uh, Gamayo. She really showcases the best of the Ilocano mine. In the work of Magdalena Gamayo, we see how physical frailty and age have not hindered her from continuing to weave and to teach. In the work of Teofilo Garcia of Abra, we see how a close relationship with nature can shape a practical object of endurance and beauty. A gourd hat may seem like a simple thing, an item dismissed as a folksy Filipiniana. But in the creations of Teofilo Garcia, an Ilocano living in San Quintin Abra, the gourd hats or tabungao that he creates are a result of agricultural knowledge, time-honored, and functional design and simple but pleasing aesthetic sensibilities. What others may see as just a hat is in fact an object that shows just how deeply traditional Filipino craftsman was attuned to his environment. For Garcia, it all begins with growing the perfectly spherical upo. Uh, Dua nga klase ti panagara ti marami na kalulog. Para ti manalo, simple laeng, uh, tabungaw, ose, wai, dansa. Ti may kadwa, para ti opisyal, ang rumimot laeng ti tabungaw, With a perfect gourd to work with, he now begins the process of creating a hat. Oh, 
Nagadyun nga agkapwa. Pagkapabo, ang pasala na dyan, no malungsot na lusan. No madalusan eh. No madalusan eh, ipamaga. Ipamaga. Apaman nga mamagaan, mabalinan nga singun. Singun para Arami din na kalubuloy. No madisin yun, nakasaga na muta dyan, lingkan, sakam, ratan, sa atisko, pasimbol. Kapasan na nga maasimbol. Mati panang Mekusto mereja di Koreksyon So yang itu So yang ada di Barnis Ada di Barnis Makalung Nanyakap Ganang atau mangkuk Mati panang urai Mati itu tangkuk Maka maka bulan Maka bulan One month with the Gamaba recognition came the sudden resurgence of interest in the hat as a statement of one's identity as well as a need for Teofilo to pass on his knowledge. I take the mama. You know, it's very rare that you find a person who becomes interested in one seemingly uh, curious item, a hat, no? uh, made of gourd. And, um, you know, he single-handedly was able to really master the skills necessary for making very strong hats. Uh, the tabungao of the people of Abra, of the Thingians. And um, if you look at the surface, the the hat seems to be simple, but if you look underneath the hat, it's very intricate. And uh, one thing good about uh, Teofilo Garcia is that he was able to really impart his knowledge to the young kids in his community. Now it's part of the uh, school system. I think the Department of Education uh, in his region was able to make the Tabangao making part of uh, the school curriculum. And so, I don't think this uh, tradition will disappear anytime soon, simply because of the way he was able to teach the young people in this community how to make it a bungao. He's really an unusual person because um, since the time that he was uh, awarded, they have been able to put together a program in elementary school, practical arts, one whole year yata or one semester, of a curriculum based on his uh, his uh, hat weaving now and it's very interesting because the, the 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 planning starts with the planting of the upo they start with the planting of the upo and then uh, he teaches them it's a special variety of upo and eh? not any variety will do and then yung harvesting and then yung, uh, yung collecting of materials and there is a curriculum so uh, so he's really an unusual person to be able to do that and to teach it he teaches it in his elementary in the elementary school in his community for me that's the ideal really uh, of gamaba so you have to give it to him he's such a quiet man also
Alam sa Saklag was uh, given the award in, uh, in the year 2000 because um, he was a dancer, very good dancer. Alam sa Saklag was also, he's also a musician, no? He knows how to play uh, the nose flute of the Kalinga, Gangsa, uh, the uh, Kolitong of the Kalinga, and many other instruments of the Kalinga. So he's a master of the musical instruments of the Kalinga and uh, of the dances and architecture. Indeed, Saklag, a native of Lubwagan, is very different from the other Gamaba masters in that he is devoted to preserving not just a particular aspect of his culture. His passion covers dance, music, chanting, architecture, spiritual and social rituals of the Kalinga. The Awichon village in Lubwagan is his own tribute to the Kalinga culture he grew up loving. Para may preserve ang kultura, sa sarili kong uh, gastos, ginawa ko na ito. Bumili ako ng lupa dito. Walang tao dito noon at walang tubig dito. Kaya parang itong lugar na ito ay uh, uh, plato, parang mesa. Awijon Mesa. Yan. So, ginawa ko ito at my own expense. Pag may kaunti akong pera, naghahal ako ng tao dito para magtrabaho. Binibigyan ko sila ng uh, dito kumakain uh, at uh, binibigyan ko sila ng parang sahod nila. At uh, anuman ang pwede kong ibenta, basta lang matapos ito, ibenta ko. Ibang rice dresses na maliliit, yung, kung may baka animal ako na kalabaw, binta ko para lang may gastusin dito. Sarili akong gino, para may preserve ang kultura. Uh, noon, pag uh, lalo na akong successful ang uh, kayo sa tribal war, uh, isa yun na parang victory dance. Uh, ang isa, kung may uh, parang piyesta ganun, Pwede sumayaw para, at may parang mag-asawa, parang wedding, wedding uh, para, pwede rin yun, sumayaw. Pero nag-umbisa noon yung sayaw na yun na sa victory dance sa tribal. Kaya walang umiti kasi warrior, pati babae walang umiti sa sayaw na yun, tachok. Pwera yung uh, uh, salip na ang tawag namin doon ay salip. Yung parang courtship na babae at lalaki. Boy, ja, e, pa, e, la, oh, boy, ja, e, pa, e, la, e, la, la, e, la, e, la, e, la, 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 bata ko, interesado ako sa sound ng gang. Pati yung mga kanta namin, mga parang yung balad, uh, yung mga victory song, yung kanta para sa uh, namatay na matanda, yun, mga salidumay, ganun. At uh, hanggang lumaki ako, yan pa rin ang kwan. So, Nung uh, nag-aral ako, parang uh, palagi akong naughty. Parang uh, gusto ko yung moving-moving. So, hindi ako nakapag-graduate ng college dahil foolish nga ako, naughty ako noon. Pero pagdating sa dance, kanta, magaling ako doon. Kaya inisip ko na yan na yata ang gift ko kay Lord. Kaya hindi parehas ang gift ni Lord sa mga tao. In Alonso Saklag, we see a Filipino who is passionate about the preservation of all aspects of his culture, and the passion, even at his age, seems unabating. The establishment and training of the Kalinga Budong dance troupe he established is easily the most accessible form of learning for both his Kalinga participants and his eager audience. Ay, 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 ay,
Alonzo Saclam's commitment to preserving the culture of a warrior society may strike some of us as anachronistic. What is he truly reviving? Courage, cultural pride, the memory of a journey that us people have taken from being members of a tribe to being part of a nation. Rasa in tai papas, that through hell and high water, he holds these huge festivals and workshops in Kalinga. And that's, that means he's, he's a good organizer. He calls together not only his community, but now I think neighboring communities. They come together, they have their festivals, and they compare and contrast, and they do this all in the spirit of oneness. Now, in the Cordilleras, this is very important. No? There are few people that can call together such uh, groups. And so the fact that he calls them and then the, the topics, uh, sometimes it's for an instrument making festival, sometimes it's for a dance festival, sometimes it's for singing. But I have, uh, I have, uh, I have on several occasions marveled at the fact that he, he is capable of doing this. It's hard to do. Yeah. Earlier I asked, what can we learn from the Gamaba awardees from Northern Luzon? Well, we may not learn the intricacies of weaving a Kusikos pattern, nor understand the social fabric of a traditional warrior society nor the way of making a hat from a gourd. These are the end products of their work. What we can learn from, what will be most useful and relevant to our lives today is the humility and the perseverance with which Alonso Saclag, Magdalena Gamayo, and Teofilo Garcia have lived their lives. Theirs is a hard choice. In the face of a changing world, they've quietly gone on doing what they love. They sought no acclaim, no recognition, no honor from a world that has yet to learn how to look and value what they stand for. Yet, slowly but surely, the recognition has come. The state, through the National Commission on Culture and the Arts, has seen to that. It is up to us now to acknowledge the gift that they have given us and to say thank you for choosing to be bearers of Dayao, our knowledge, our pride.